All right, guys. Turn your attention to the board. Good. Finally, I'll get a chance to use this. I mean, not on you guys, but to point at the board so the camera can actually hear and see what I'm saying. All right, so this, ha this chicken scratch up here is anti-disestablishmentarianism, which who here will give you a definition so that I can break it down into actual English? Miss Christina Morton, please, enlighten us. Um, opposition to withdrawal of state support are recognized from the established church, especially the angelic church in 19th century A. Right, so speak, speak, ah, with particular respect to the Anglican church, uh, i.e. the Church of England. So basically you oppose the church withdrawing its funds, for, or you oppose the government withdrawing funds from a program. Okay? But it started, the word got its origin from the government withdrawing its support from the Anglican Church. And England's religious history is very long and very complicated, um, but most of you know something about it if you're not Catholic. This is the So I can use it as a sentence. Um, I, um, I'm sorry, I can't read that. Let me say the word right. I anti disestablishmentarian, the support of um, any church. To use it in a sentence is a bit trickier. It's one of those words that okay. people will bandy around to show how smart they think they are, but has very little bearing. It's easier to say, I support the government funding, you know, John the Baptist Church, than it is to say, I, I find my views are a little bit more uh, uh, anti-disestablishmentarian uh, than yours. Yeah, yes. yeah, towards that effort. So, it's really a word that is effectively useless, but but knowing how it's used will allow you to call people out. It's, it's a nice little trick. So when someone tries the parlor trick of anti-disestablishmentarianism, you can say, I know what that actually means, and I can use it properly. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, but I could. All right? Okay. So, um, like, everyone remembers the Occupy movement. You know, that that is kind of, like, if you're looking for, what is it? Antonyms for this, um, you know, they wanted social justice, that whole thing, the Wall Street thing. That's largely independent stuff, but that could be a, an antonym. So if you, ah, it's, it was a lark of a word. We're going to ignore it and get onto the review, and reviewing how you all did on your final practice final. Okay. Oh, you. Got it? And are turning it in? I can flip it over real quick. So, the good news is that most of you did very well. That is the good news. Is it bad news? No, no. Does anyone here have a violin or know how to play one? Because I need some violin music for the next one. I don't know, violin, violin, woodwind instrument. Well, you're doing like a jazz ensemble. Right, she was great. She was great. All right, all right. So. I'll give you a brief outline of what we're doing today. So we're going to go over our practice exam. And then I'm going to tell you what is going to be and not, not going to be on the exam. I'm going to put it up on the board. So uh, review the exam. Fine. Uh, just put a little carrot there. This is a great thing for proofreading. Like, when I give you your exam, and I, I'm going to put invisible words in, don't just scrawl, you know, the here, like, eh, eh, because that looks weird. The reason we have the carrot and editing is so you put a little little triangle without a bottom up here, and then write the, it's where it can be clear to see. So it's between review and exam. So if you wanted to say review the exam, you'd go carrot to the. That way it's seen clearly, it's not, you know, straddling in between. And this is why I love double spacing when I'm writing this document, is so you have room to see the edits that are going to be made. Okay? So the carrot is a good thing to remember. I will look on that more favorably than just scribbling the on top. Alright? Easy peasy. And as to why it's called the carrot, I have no idea. It, it, it makes no sense, but okay. Alright, review the uh, practice. Uh, that. Review the practice exam, then 
Uh, probably should have you guys actually practice your typing just to be sure. Um, so, pangram exercise. Fine, that's going to be a little bit of a Review. Content. Um, exam. Okay. That's our that's our overall reach. I mean, there are going to be digressions, pauses, changes, but overall, we're following this general form. All right. Any questions about how we're doing things? Is there anything that's not up here that you want to talk about? Anything? Totally get away with not wearing a collared shirt, and no one will say a thing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What is it? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Fuss is fuss. I know that um, it was on me that I missed class mm -hmm. doing the... Um, practice? The, no, not doing the practice, but doing the... Um, oh, the brainstorming stuff? Brainstorming and outline. Right. I, the brainstorming, I seem to have... Okay. But now the outlining. Okay. It's just a matter of lettering and numbering the things that I put in the circles. Correct. Incorrect. Okay. And that's I will. I'll be glad to go over the difference with you. Thank and you. If you feel you need more more time to go over that, we have. I have Thursday mornings open, and I have all of Friday. It's if you want to come in and talk with me about it, I can do it. Make sure you're ready. I don't want to give an exam to anyone who's not fully ready for it. Because we're having an exam on Monday. Absolutely right. Oh, yes. All right, so oh, yes. I can work you into my you. schedule. No problem. Thank you so much. All right, so. Okay, so reviewing the practice exam. Everyone get it out. Um, I handed it back to you. If it's in highlighter, then hooray. If it's not in highlighter, that means you didn't mess it up. Um, well, okay. There's. I, th I hope I gave you useful comments. I'm going to use Ms. Jo Ms. Uh, Johnson's as a reference guide. Uh, so let's go over the... Um, First page here, the editing. That's this is a bit of a warm up. The editing for the actual exam is going to be maybe in another paragraph, so three paragraphs total. Because if nothing else you get out of this class, I want you to be able to look at a given body of work and say, I can do that better. I can do that better. That comma is wrong. You know, being able to edit yourself is great, and your job. The more you're able to edit yourself, the more you're able to make my job obsolete because you won't have to say, Mr. Charlie, will you look over this? Well, you will have to say it, but I'll find less things to get wrong, which will in turn make everything better. All right, so let's work with the uh, start sentence, the uh, starting sentence. Who here wants to read that one out loud? What, what would you put instead of what there is? The like, what do your corrections make it say? Misuse commas and for one. No, 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 no. We're in the actual. Um, oh, oh. But we're in the actual editing part. We are. Uh, the italicized bit Everyone towards the second half of the page. All right. So, um, Mr. Cornelius, I know you've written this all up in a very thorough little document um, on your desktop. You sent it to me. So, can you read it out from there? Read the first sentence, please, with with your edits. Everyone, which is spelled out, mm -hmm. has its misspelled mm -hmm. and unique style of writing. Okay, good. Uh, we're at the bottom part of the page. Okay. Like the part that's where you start the italics. Yeah. Where you start editing. Where you start editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're going over starts. the first paragraph. Where yeah. you start editing. Yes. yes. Right. Yeah. Like everyone. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. We're going over that just to um, make sure. And also to catch anything in case, God forbid, you know, both of us missed it. Because even with multiple edits, you can still miss tiny errors. Invisible okay. words are especially resilient. All right. Ms. Cheryl, retrieve the second sentence with your... Um, your corrections okay. to it? For some, mm -hmm. it is as distinct, and then I put the carrot, mm -hmm. as. Okay, good. And then, um, and that's supposed to be a, a lowercase a, mm -hmm. their face, comma, or how they dress. Yep, that's acceptable. Very good. You actually don't need the comma, but if that's how you speak, you can put it in there. It doesn't hurt the sentence's structure. Oh, okay. What? Yes. Is it okay to have for some comma 
It is as distinct as their face or the way they dress? Yeah, it's written that way. For some, it is as distinct as...